Hey guys, so we got a new project. Uh, gonna be a little fun, a little bit different, but uh, I was gonna get into some more of the OBS stuff. Uh, I had a friend, I was talking with him, and he ended up getting a truck like I used to own. So we got to talking and decided on something we wanted to do, so I was gonna go ahead and include you guys in on it. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look over the truck and I'll show you what it is. Here we go, 1998 Chevy Short Wide. It's got the 4.3 liter V6 in it. Just a little two wheel drive, base option truck. Nice little truck. Interior looks good on it. It's got the busted dash like all of them. If you've been following my channel, you know the Suburban was really bad about that, but they're all that way. I actually had one just like this but it was a five speed instead of automatic and it had red interior so the seat was identical, it was just red. Red floors, red dash, all that good stuff. Had a lot more miles than this sucker did. But anyway, we got to talking and uh, yep, notorious for that. I'm gonna have to try to fix that for him. Um, he's a bigger feller like I am. So we got to talking about what he wanted to do to it. He thought about having me slam it and see notch it and all that stuff and then he said well where I live I really couldn't do much with it you know I'll be scraping everything so I said well how do you feel about raising it up a little bit and he thought he liked it so uh, I contacted the guys at Torch Off Road and they sent me out a kit um, so we're gonna go ahead and put a three inch leveling kit on this thing and uh, I think it'll look pretty good when it's done If you've been watching the channel at all, like I said, you know, I did a 98 uh, GMC Suburban and I did a three inch torsion bar lift kit on it. Uh, I got it from Torch Off Road. I was just kind of looking around for some stuff and thought I'd try it out and I was really happy with the product. So I went ahead and made a video with it and it's almost what I started my channel with. It's the one that really made it take off. And uh, we got so many views with it. The guys at Torch Off Road were nice enough to go ahead and give us a... Uh, 10% promo code for you guys so um, I'll show you the kit here in a second and then I'll get you to the promo code uh, you can get 10% off any of their products so really nice of those guys to do that for us we appreciate it we're gonna go ahead and move forward I'm gonna show you the install uh, we're gonna run through the whole thing and do it before and after it's gonna be a good time so let's get rolling so here's the kit pretty simple kind of like the uh, 2018 GMC I did you're gonna have blocks in the back we didn't put them on that one because it already set the way he wanted it but We'll do it on this truck and I'll show you how to install these blocks. Got the new U-bolts for it. They always send you a sticker kit if you order from Torch. Had some people order on different websites they didn't get them, so uh, be sure to order from Torch. They'll get you everything. Uh, nice new U-bolts. And then we're going to have the cool spring spacers here. So, get the spring compressor. We'll show you how that goes. They lay everything out for you guys in instructions, so it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, they have a great customer service too. If you, that's how I got into contact with them. If you have any questions, man, just hit them up. Go on their website. It, it shows their customer service number and all that, and they and they are on it. They're all about it. They ship to you quick. So I've been really impressed with them. So that's why I thought I'd go ahead and do another kit. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this one started and go through the basics. I'll kind of check it as we go and make sure I'm doing it right and uh, see what kind of trouble we can get into with this sucker. All right, let's get it up in the air. It might be high enough. Always remember safety on these things. We're gonna go ahead and put the jack stand up underneath here. I like to put it right here where you see the wells and the frame go together. That's one of the best places I've ever had luck with. And just raise it up as much as you can to get you some work done. Put that notch in and go to the other side and match it. Sitting good right there. We'll just work with that. Okay, so on the directions, 
We show to get it up on jack stands and pull the front wheel. So we're going to go ahead and get these front ones off. We'll just start one side at a time. So just going by the steps, we've already got her on level ground and chalked and all that good stuff. Move the front wheels. We got this one off. Now we're going to remove the brake caliper and set it aside to get it out of the way and make sure we, we don't want to tear up the brake lines on it. And then we may have to pull apart this ABS. Not a big deal. But here's your coil spring. So we've got to get all this stuff out of the way so we can get that coil spring out. We got to get that strut out and then we'll put the spacer on it which goes right up in here, right up in there. We'll put that spacer in and that's going to give it that three inch lift. So we'll go ahead and start disassembling everything we need to disassemble. So we're just going to get right here and loosen this bolt for the caliper off. This one right here, and it's just a one of the three eighths little hex bits we have. Uh, you can get those anywhere. O'Reilly's mainly is where I get my stuff, but uh, you just put that on there, break that loose, and then we'll able, we'll have to pry off our caliper. Then we'll hang it up. Okay, once you get these bolts loose, get them slid out. You're just gonna pry your caliper up off here. Go. She broke loose. Now we want to find a way to let's see. I'll probably pry this open. Anyway, we'll probably wait until we get this uh, upper ball joint off. Uh, once we get it loose, you know, I'll have tension down here. I'm going to go ahead and raise this A arm up and bring this caliper over here and just hang it up here. Use this slot or something that way these. Uh, brake lines and all that stuff are out of the way. So uh, anyway, that one's ready to go. So we'll mark that off the list. Next step is going to be just to remove this tie rod in here. So we'll just uh, take this nut off and knock that loose. 18 millimeter. All right, we got that off. So they make tools for this, just like the uh, uh, idler and pitman arm tools you guys have seen me use in other videos. It's a pitchfork that goes on here. I don't have that. I really never have used it. Uh, it's recommended. It's recommended by Torch. And uh, if you want to go ahead and do that, I've always just given it some love taps right here. Even at doing that, you may want to at least keep that nut on there a little bit so you don't hit the threads in case you're kind of a wild swinger like I am. But. it's broke loose basically just make sure you're not hitting the tie rod or your tie rod threaded end here or you'll you'll be replacing all that and that ain't no fun let me tell you I've got a video on that too it's uh, I fought her on that suburban it was bad so next one's gonna be to remove our sway bar here so got this bolt up here and one on the bottom and that'll raise that off there Crusty. So when you're doing these, you know, torch is just the uh, leveling kit. It's kind of up to you to figure out what parts you might want to change from there, you know. Like I did my Suburban and went back and redid all the steering. Uh, sway bar bushings, tie rod ends, all that. So, um, you know, if you got the funds, they can do it all. Now's the time to do it. This Man, the last few threads are always just a pain in the rear. Doesn't want to come off there. Come off! That's what I thought. Ow! Ow! Ugh, that's what I get for talking trash. Alright, so I got this sway bar loose. Took that off right there. So we're good to go. Uh, it'll pull out when we're ready. Now we're going to do the 
shock absorber here can see it's inside the coil spring so in order for us to put the spacer on we've got to be able to pull this coil spring out and that's in the way so that's another simple one you got one bolt right up in there right here and then you got these are also 13 millimeter 14 millimeter on top That's all. Just top bushing just to free up. There we go. We want to get ready for this coil spring. So, what we need to do is get a jack up underneath this bottom A arm because we got to pull this upper A arm off. And all that tension is on that spring. So if you have nothing supporting it, you break this loose, it's going to shoot out. And I've seen those springs come flying out on people before. We don't want that. So put some, uh, put your jack up underneath that A-arm. That'll get the tension off of it. And then you can pull this upper ball joint off. You don't have to get crazy with it. Just put it up on there where you know it's not going to move. You don't have to get crazy with it, just put it up on there where you know it's not going to move. So if you've never used one of these spring compressors, here it is. You can get these at O'Reilly's, you can either buy them or rent them. It's pretty simple. You put it where you want on which coils and you just use this to tighten it up. Now I recommend this just because it takes the tension off and remember you're putting a spacer in there so you're gonna have a space like this and you put that spacer in there if that springs all the way uh, sprung out then you're gonna have a rough time getting it in there. Uh, coming out with it usually if I do lowering ones I don't worry about it but since we're lifting I go ahead and put that spring on and it's going to help you put it back in as well so we'll go ahead and run these suckers in there okay so next step is uh we're going to go ahead and just pull this uh upper a arm off okay good deal now we get a wrench and break that nut loose well inch and a sixteenth is going to have to do Yep, that works. All right, guys, I lost video for a minute there, but um, just now putting the compressor on because I had a tough time while it was installed getting it on there. Um, I don't remember why. It may be the style that I have, but uh, still, recommend putting it back on using the compressor. And then... You just run your new spacer right inside that sucker and then we'll go right back up in there this is where it can get kind of tricky fully extended out as far as we can go with her and 
Now we just got to slide with our new spacer that goes right on top here. We got to slide that in. So try to work that bad boy up in there. I think I just need a shorter uh, pull spring tool, maybe. Well, we got the spacer in. There's the coil spring in. Um, tie rod's back on. Sway bar's back on. We still need to put the brakes back on it. Put the shock back in. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get further into depth on the other side. I had to take care of some stuff. So here's the biggest issue I had. Getting this spring compressor up in there and being able to actually use it. Because once you get it where you need it to be, these bolts that I cut off were way too long and it would hit up here or it hit down here and you couldn't do anything with it. So I had to shorten them and then I had to work it in a few different areas and finally got it where I could get that sucker in there. So now that I've got these fixed the right way, tomorrow I'm going to get over there and I'm going to do that other side. I'm going to call it a night. Now we got the uh, passenger side all dialed in. We got our tie rod back on, sway bar back in. We got our uh, interlock brake system and brake all put back together. Springs in, shock is in. So uh, I've got to work on the driver's side. It'll issue with the spring compression still, but that's pretty much it. You just reverse everything that you pulled off, put it all back together, and you're done. Biggest importance is figuring out your spring compression. So this one has been a real pain for me, but. I made it work by cutting it down, but uh, just be careful when you're getting your tools. Make sure you got the right one so you don't have to fight it like I did. So uh, I want to work on the driver's side, and then we got some storms moving in, so that'll probably be it for this part of it. But then I'm going to do the rear next. For the rear half, just put your jack right underneath the axle on the differential there. That'll raise the whole rear end up, and then you can find a whatever sweet spot you like on the frame. I usually go right in front where the frame dips back down goes underneath the cab that's usually where i do it on these uh short wheel bases like this it can kind of teeter if you don't get it just right so be sure to be careful and get in the right spot So you'll have instructions for the rear U-bolts just like you do the uh, the front spring spacers. So well, everything is on there that you need. But one of the important things is when you're putting it together, notice that this piece is taller than this piece, so it's tapered forward. And that is what you want to face to the front. And what that's for is to give your drive line the proper pinion angle. So they went ahead and engineered it so you wouldn't have to do uh, any any shimming or anything. Uh, years ago when I was doing these you had to shim them and put your angle finder and all that on it you don't even have to do it with this for these little for these little kits so um, we're gonna go ahead and get these u-bolts off unbolt the shocks and uh, we'll lower the axle down get ready to put in the new spacers here and then the, the shocks let's just dive right in on the action You know, you work on these things, there's always something stupid like this that slows you down. Always be prepared for it. It is happening. It happens to me every time.
All right, so I finally got that loose. And all you want to do is make sure you got your jack underneath the axle. Just tap that off like so. And then pull your old U-bolts out. Keep up with this bad boy. Nuts and washers on the old U-bolts. Throw them out of the way. All right, so now we'll pull this bottom shock mount off. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good one too. Uh, you'll see in the directions it says to unbolt the bottom mount, but not the top, don't remove, but we are going to remove it because we got new shocks. Attitude adjustment. shock removed. Go ahead and remove the other side and then we'll lower it down. All right now that we've got both sides undone that was the worst set of u-bolts I've ever dealt with in my life. I mean whoever put those on ought to have their ass whipped. I ain't kidding. Anyway moving forward we're gonna go ahead and put our new blocks in here and our new u-bolts on. So remember when you do this you want your taper to go forward like so all right so this goes down in your axle and then it's got a hole on top for your bolt here on your leaf spring so just make sure you get that in there properly and everything will be good uh, taper forward You want to be careful, I've got this sitting on a jack stand, it's just kind of chilling there, so um, I've got jack stands underneath just in case it falls, but you don't really have any support and I don't have, you know, a lift or anything to put this on, so if you're doing it on the ground or concrete like I always do, just be sure you've got something underneath it where it doesn't just fall and you smash and break a finger or something silly like that. Then bring our new bolts down. put it on the other side as well that way we can start working with it so now it's just a matter of putting it back together the opposite of how you took it apart gonna get our new u-bolts in our new new washers and lock nuts these come with the nylock style gonna get these on and then we'll slowly just start raising up that axle so we can get this positioned correctly. Because you can get these off and you're gonna wish you'd have never put the lift on. And it has nothing to do with just the lift, it just has to do with the axle. If you are changing U-bolts or lowering or anything like that, and you, you pull these things off, you don't get them on there right, you're gonna regret it. So, now make sure on this plate you put them in the grooves. That's how it clamps down on top of these springs. So make sure you're putting it right inside these grooves here. You can see the little ripple. Now we pointed the pin down, which goes into the hole of your perch. And then there was a hole here for the bolt of the leaf spring, which goes into the top of this lift block here. So now we're all set. We're good to go. We got that in there. We can put some tension on these here just to raise it up since we know it's where we want it. And then we'll go over to that side and do the same thing on it. Gonna just slightly run these U-bolts up just to keep us in the position we want to be in. That 
way when we go to the other side, this side doesn't come out of square. Okay, so before you move to the other side, let's make sure, see how that's kind of trying to pop out, and so is that. You might just give them a little tap back in their place. A little love tap. And then, notice right here, that we're, our little uh, bracket's a little bit off, so we'll just tap it this way after we get, uh, we'll look at that stuff after we get them both snugged up. bolts up where we need them. Those snugged but not torqued but they're up there good you can see how the blocks sitting where we kind of where we want it. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. Go ahead and get it snug and then we're gonna replace the shocks and then we'll raise it up, put some tension on it, and we'll really torque everything down. Put the wheels back on and set her down, see how she looks. I want to run them evenly. So you'll see me just kind of cross around. And what I'm doing is one, like I said, I want to make sure that we're getting this roughly where it used to be. You can see I got that back covering where that rust spot was where this was sitting. And you want that block sitting level to where it's just like the perch was in, in stock position. So you just want all that sitting like it was so you don't throw your pinion off, that pinion angle, which could tear up your U-joints. And you don't want it, you don't want your axle cocked sideways where you're driving sideways down the road. You can start wearing tires and gears and everything else out. You just gotta make sure that's in there the way it looked before. And um, Put your bracket down here where it was and just get this all squared up and flush. New blocks and bolts, good to go. Now we're gonna remove the top of the shock. I already showed you the bottom, so here's the top. It's got the dog bone style. So these are 13 millimeter. You're just gonna remove both bolts so we can slide the new rough country one back in there. Okay, tops of the shocks are mounted. We're gonna go ahead and put some uh, tension on the axle here. We're going to raise it up and see if we need to go ahead. I think I'm going to have to go ahead and break that uh, banding on these to bolt the bottom up. So we're just going to start that, get those bolted up, and then it'll be time to raise it up, put the wheels on, and uh, set it on the ground, see how it looks. See how much that was compressed? Run your sprock bolt and nut washer back on there. Tighten her up and she's good to go. it on here correctly. Boom. There it is. 
Wash your nut, tighten her up. All right, so here it is with its new ride height. Looks pretty good. You can definitely see those two inch blocks in the back. I didn't think we're really gonna do it, but it did. It did a nice job. So the front looks really good. So I think when he gets wheels and tires on, he's gonna be really pleased. So, um, yeah, not bad, man. Not bad at all. So another uh, challenging at times lift kit, but successful one. I'm glad to be able to do another one. So, um, want you guys to make sure you go on Torch Off Road and check out their website. They got this lift kit. They've got the 2018 GMC. They got that one. They've got the original one that I had a, one of my first videos with, with that uh, torsion key on my 98 Suburban. They've got those. All kinds of other stuff. So, just go check them out. And like I said in the first video, we had such good success with the torsion key video that. Uh, they were nice enough at Torch Off Road to go ahead and give us a promo code for you guys to use. So if you guys want to save 10% on everything that's a Torch product on the Torch Off Road website, go to www.torch.com, use the promo code HEARTROCK10. So it's H-A-R-T-R-O-C-K-10. Go ahead and use that and uh, that'll get you 10% off. It's always nice. They're good priced anyway and you can see it's good products. I wouldn't keep using it if it wasn't. Uh, there's plenty out there to mess with, so I, I was glad to use theirs again. Uh, thanks to Torch Off Road for that. Thanks to all you guys for watching. Uh, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, we appreciate your views. And uh, check in with us next time. we got more coming. Thanks, guys.